welcome back to the channel welcome back guys it's a reaction video who made it to the table of course you and i made it lazy people everywhere if you love me ha, before i'm go, i love you with the water i love you back to back back to back <laughs> Backpackers everywhere, lazy people everywhere. You guys are too much. Thank you for coming back to support this mama, of right? Of course, here. Coco Mama hearts you. Coco Mama appreciates your presence here. Thank you for all you do. Who made it to the table? Have you grabbed something? Grab whatever that is grabbable. Me, I have my cup of tea here. Grab your liquid, solid fruits, anything, anything that is there. Let's get this juice started who else is on this table apart from us marawa army <laughs> this marawa army wonder shall never season in your hands guys if you are doing your reaction and it's based on one-sided opinion it's not nice as a reactor whether you are supporting this person or not once you see something that is not too right be bold enough to react don't just be supporting this person oh marawa is our person i'm supporting so, as soon as you see another content creator you are very very fast to expose that person but you will not expose your favorite even when he has done something wrong this is what what we call double standard mm, baki baki you are so fast to come forward the maya and now you know how it feels right you know how it feels to go after someone negatively. You can do it, but you must come and be yabbing nonsense in the name of supporting Marwa. <laughs> guys, I thought I have seen it all. That's one thing some of these guys don't know. They don't understand how this reaction thing works. You react both negatively and positively, and it doesn't matter the person. You don't cherry pick and choose who you react positively for and who you react negatively or who you can easily call out it's crazy this is no longer reaction who else is on this table mrs maya made it to the table she left Accra. the takra day is by her mother-in-law now she's back to Accra, where she is based with her husband she dropped the video and we'll be looking at that because hey she's giving it to us with the in that video so many stuff she told us the reason why she's put on weight mrs maya was saying a whole lot there so we will be looking at that one there's no need to rush mm -hmm. who else is here cora obidi cora obidi is a nigerian based in america mm -hmm. she married oyubo man hey if divorce case is always like this i don't think anybody would want to even marry think of going through that yeah yeah rabbi i've never seen such a difficult divorce i've never ever like it's been almost two years now that they got divorced but these guys are still having issues every day they are online either cora is ranting and explaining or dr dean is also coming out what kind of Uibo man is this uh, he decided guys, you know the irony of this their case I used to react on it about a year ago. Me and Black Beauty. Shout out to you. Do you know the irony of their divorce case? The irony is that the same person who asked for divorce, the, the same person who decided to move on, who felt that, oh, Cora is not the right woman. Cora is Olusho. Up till now, he's still addressing the mother of his children as Olusho. Hmm? Mm. as a runs girl i don't understand the same person who decided to move on is the same person refusing to move on have you ever seen anything like this guys this their divorce issue started just immediately after cora had their second baby like this baby was not even up to five days i think she just came back from the hospital and this guy decided to come for as Cora. soon as Cora put to bed as if he was waiting for Cora you could see that he had a lot he had the plans already that he was gonna divorce Cora but what he did not understand that this girl got so much talent in her apart from being a performer <laughs> she is killing it she's a singer 
Okay, she's an influencer. She's a dancer. She is killing it on this social media. Now, what is happening now is that this guy is using Facebook to attack Cora. Cora is really, really crying. No woman deserves this. The mother of your children, you're going to be so mean that you want to even remove bread and butter from her mouth. Her papa is, is on this table. I've already started with Cora. Will be the so Let's Kukuma finish with Cora before we move ahead to other people on this table. Let's watch her clip, guys. Every morning I wake up, all the videos I do the day before is flagged for something. If it's not self-harm, it's violence. If it's not if it's not violence, it's nudity. If it's not nudity, it's, it's, it's some ridiculous thing. I could literally be wearing a full bed sheet and eating cheese and they'll say it's self-harm and violence. I'm sick and tired of Facebook and what they are doing to me. It's literally being targeted and harassed. I'm not the first creator to have 7 million followers and I won't be the last. But for you to flag every single video I make as a content creator is mean. It's like you're targeting that content creator and you're trying to make them, you're trying to emotionally destabilize them. That's what you're trying to do. So I'm on YouTube. You guys go check me out. Nikki Chi. Thank you so much for five super thanks. Appreciate you. Much love. Tracy Barnes, thank you for $4.99. Super thanks. Appreciate you. Much love. And if there's not any, if there's no nobody that can help somebody who has such a number of followers if there's no creator support if there's nothing and i'm trying to reach out and there's nothing and it's my release day and i can't even have any single star no star no subscriber nothing then it's sick it's actually sick i think that i'm just being constantly harassed like they're just targeting my mental health so no i'm not gonna sit down and pretend like all is well in paradise it's not it's not because all my videos, absolutely none of them has any of the things that have been, I've been constantly harassed for. Every day I wake up, I need to show you a video of all my videos. Every single video is self-harm, is, 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 is violent. Is, what is all this nonsense? I am not all these things. I'm not a terrorist. I'm, not a, I'm just a girl trying to survive with her girls. I have mortgage to pay. On my release day, you guys strip me of all my monetization. We move. Great news, I am now the latest Grammy Recording Academy Grammy Recording Academy member. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. When the one door closes, another one opens. And I can't wait till the day that I don't have to rely on these people. And I don't have to rely on such a sick, demented system to be able to feed my kids. Do you remember this video? You remember this video? Please, does this video show self-harm and nudity? Does this video show self-harm and nudity? Is there any nudity in this video? Is there any self-harm in this video? This video has been flagged for self-harm and nudity. Let me show you where it's been flagged. Juliet Sullivan, thank you so much for 1999. Super thanks. Appreciate you. Ola Yimika, thank you so much for 499. Super thanks. Guys, Cora Obidi was demonetized by Facebook. And for sure, somebody is behind this. Possibly her ex husband might be responsible because after their divorce, he's claiming that he's the one that made Cora who she is today. He's claiming that he has invested a lot in Cora. He demanded for so much, right? And he's even making it more difficult for this girl to be with her girls. They have two girls together. He's blocking everything. Now he's not even he also came out and he claimed that Cora is making a lot of money on social media. What kind of jealousy is this one? I've never seen anything like this. Like, move on, dude. Move on. You guys are not compatible. Your husband is supposed to be there to look after you after childbirth. He's divorcing. This girl has gone through a lot. I really feel sorry at this point for Cora. So Cora officially is calling her audience to come over to Whitey. Because I don't understand. I don't think Whitey will ever do something like this. Guys, hey, 7 million followers on Facebook. I guess. So what she says is whatever she's doing, they must label it either that she's being violent 
or she's showing too much because Cora, to be honest to you guys, Cora and nudity are five and six. <laughs> hey, Cora, <laughs> her bum bum is always outside. Whether she's on a stage, whether she's performing, Cora will be there for you. She's always sitting outside, bum bum. So that could also contribute. And of course, this audience that she has built, she actually grew after her divorce. She built this audience after her divorce. So she became more popular after her divorce. Could this be the reason? Why? This audience that she carried now, almost half of them, they want to hear about Dr. Dean. They are always talking stuff about Another thing that happens is this. As a content creator, you may not necessarily violate the guidelines, okay? But what about the audience? What about the keyboard reactors? You know, like the people commenting, insulting her ex might actually contribute to that. So, of course, on Facebook, people get stars and then it's converted to money. And she's big, 7 million followers. This guy, not only is he blocking Cora, he's also giving Cora a hard time. Well, today, I wake up in the morning, I look at my, my page. All the videos are flagged. Self-harm, terrorism, ha terrorist, terrorist behavior, self-harm, violence, nudity, sexual impl sexually explicit content. Please, how is my release day and I'm not making, do you know how much it t costs to create music in a LA? Cora, to be honest to you guys, I have to be honest here. Cora needs to work on her dressing as an influencer. You are not supposed to. If you are on stage performing, I can understand, guys. Because you dress also according to the occasion. Another thing, guys, is Facebook may not judge her according to the way she dresses. I mean, in that particular video that they have flagged. Probably in the comment section, people are saying a whole lot of stuff about nudity. She was wearing a crop top. Maybe they were insulting her ex in the comment section. So Facebook is very sensitive. I'm happy that she's coming over to YT and she's big also on YT. She has over 400k subscribers and actually, I don't know, probably she makes it more, especially having 7 million people. I can understand the frustration. And mind you, she still takes care of her children. Okay, she has days that she's with them. She is co-parenting with her ex. So if her ex would do this to her, and this is her nine to five like she's a full-time content creator how does this guy expect Cora to survive in this life pray that you will never get this kind of partner in your life i feel like dr dean is going too much what did this girl exactly do to you what is her offense like move on dude there are so many fishes in the ocean he's busy saying that Cora is trying to tarnish his image that his children will grow up to see him as a bad father but he's doing exactly the same imagine calling the mother of your children a core girl eh? a runs girl imagine calling the mother of your children Olusho, a shower he get as he be he get as he be guys i'm really feeling sorry for cora and i wish cora can also dress up guys i don't want to lie to you cora needs to work on her dressing Periods. It's as simple as that. Let's move to the next person. Mapopo. Hey, Mapopo is the man. Congratulations to Mapopo. He has laid the foundation of his building. Guys, remember a few weeks back, a subscriber. Isn't God great? What God cannot do does not exist. A subscriber bought a land for Mapopo. <laughs> At his lowest moment, at his down moment, when, of course, his bestie, Mayoguno, disappointed him. You know, just because he went to Mombasa, he went to Nairobi, and Mayoguno benched him, pushed him one side, thinking that he is his god. What is happening today? Mapopo has started building his own house. Eh? From a nursing to a landlord to a landowner. Mm. We are so happy for him. There's something I picked on this video. Before I let you guys watch it, I'm going to tell you what I picked here. What I picked here is a humble guy. He is humble. Humility is the key. Okay? 
he said that he has handymen that serve the medicine but one of them was not there he decided to downgrade he decided to put himself down and he became what he became a handyman he was there through and through david jr can he ever do something like this have you ever seen him even lifting one pin think of lifting stones heavy stones like this serving the other medicines eh? congratulations to him and guys recently his wife put to bed also a bouncing baby boy this is a double blessing for my people and we're happy Let's for you. watch him me uh, before i i work a hard and handman after handman i work a, hard, um, a job uh, like a mason you know yes so no problem everything is going well, but me and me i'm fight i'm fighter yes. what can you do you know People we say it, me I'm relaxing. Me I'm not relaxing. Me I'm not rich rich. <laughs> <laughs> me I'm not boss boss but. Hey. Here. Hey namba uwe. Sasa hii si geuze. Kama mtoka hetere kana wako kama. Hey kaya je. Ivi. You heard him me I'm not relaxing. Me I'm not rich rich. Throughout this video about one hour video he was walking throughout and he got someone recording everything for him. That's the way to do. You don't come and start feeling overnight that you have made it. Oh, feeling so big. Oh, my workers, why must I do everything? Oh, I have workers now. Oh, I'm making money on YouTube. I must not touch all these things. Hey, I must not suffer again. I must not, I must not. I'm a big boss. Mm? And on top of it, some will even work and they will not get paid. It's crazy. So, my popo seems to be a very humble cool-headed guy he didn't just let others do this work he saw that there's need for him to save that extra money you know at the same time show some humility you know let's move to mrs maya it wasn't my cup of tea obviously because i'm not from here but I'm slowly warming up to Accra and I'm loving it. I really, I really am. Like now I feel kind of excited that I am in Accra. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. She was talking about Accra, how beautiful Accra is, how she's now connected, adjusted. You know, coming from another country, you can understand. She's Kenyan, now she's married to Kenyan. But Miss Trudy is still making this mistake. Once you are married to somewhere, especially in African way automatically you are part of the place you are married to so there's nothing like it's none of my business it's not my cup of tea after all I'm not from here but I'm adjusting adjustment yes but you are now part of the system you are now part of the culture you are now part of everything even when things are going wrong you are still part of the system because that is where you belong now by marriage yes I am part of this by marriage. You can put it by marriage. I am part of this. But don't say it's none of your business. I am not from here. You are from there by marriage. Marriage is a very strong commitment. Very, very strong one. And that is the place you reside. So I don't believe when she says, oh, I don't belong there. Let's continue watching. I don't even know how to answer you guys but since they keep coming even in the last video i uploaded i thought you know what let me let you guys in there's nothing wrong there's everything is fine the reason i've not been wearing my ring is because i had removed it when i was in accra and then i misplaced it i don't know where i put it guys okay people were asking her where is your wedding ring why are you not wearing your wedding ring you know some people can be nosy like this <laughs> people stop wearing their wedding rings for so many reasons either pregnancy when you have put on weight and if somebody decided not to make her pregnancy public she will give you 10 million reasons like what she was saying here that she lost it and then she traveled uh, something like this how can you lose it and then you left 
it was Maya that found it and Maya called her and Maya was asking her where is the wedding ring and Maya told her that he saw it and now that he's and now that she's coming back and now that she's back to Accra she will start wearing it she will start wearing it let's say something is cooking in between hmm let's say we are not in the position guys you know i'm a midwife but i will not come here and make someone's announcement for her <laughs> it's not my business but we are just saying we are just saying because again she was complaining about weight gain <laughs> that her in-laws always feed her they feed her a lot mm. that's why she has put on so much weight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm hearing that one so we cannot come here and make pregnancy announcement for other people but i am just simply saying in general that people stop wearing their rings for so many reasons number one if you have put on weight if you are lucky and if it's a good stuff it can be expanded but let's say you buy all these things all these metals that cannot be expanded you you have to change the whole thing so weight gain sickness if you have lost weight your ring also will not fit you nicely you might actually lose it of course pregnancy everything will start doing well even the nose the lips the face everywhere will start puffing up like coco mama's face so that is that one I can understand the excuse that she's giving here. Let's just pray that um, she's using it to cover up. Oh, yeah, I don't believe in her story, basically. Let me just put it very straight. You guys should leave me alone. Lazy people ever. Leave me. Did I tell you that I love you? Hey, if you love me, how did I do this intro like this? If you love me, I love you, Woto Woto. I love you like tomorrow, no day. I love you back to back. Back. Backpackers everywhere. Where's my backpacker? Ghana. There you go. We must hit this Ghana by fire by force. It's a question of time. Mm -hmm. Let's continue watching Mrs. Maya, guys. And I feel so nostalgic. Have you guys noticed how I have become fat? This is the effect my in-laws have on me. They always feed me all the time. Eat Trudy, eat Trudy. Give me food in the morning, heavy food. Guys, I'm talking about wache in the morning. I'm talking about heavy rice. So these guys have made me fat. Have, has anyone noticed that I look different? <laughs> but I'm not complaining. I always eat so much when I'm with my in-laws. Now that I'm going back, I don't know if I'm going to be able to maintain this. I am so grateful for the memories I've made with my in-laws, especially my mother-in-law. Guys, you have heard from her. Hey, if a woman is hiding pregnancy, she will give you 10 million reasons. Oh, I put on so much weight. Oh, my tummy. Oh, my tummy is just like that. Hey, some women can hide, especially if you are afraid or you have had miscarriages in the past or you you experience infertility secondary infertility a lot of miscarriages a lot of a lot a lot <laughs> hey if you have experienced pregnancy challenges hey you will hide it you will freaking give the million excuses why your tummy is popping out you will give the million excuses why your face is popping up you will give 10 million in fact you will go and look for oversized dresses to cover the tummy hey they cover especially first three months you know first three four months a woman will stand more chances of having miscarriage mm -hmm. especially if care is not taken or if there is already issues mm -hmm. so many issues can result especially past history especially if the woman has a past history of miscarriage so that's why the doctor will advise you do not announce it because hey once you announce that you're pregnant and you lose it hey the whole world will come for you everybody will be like i thought she's pregnant she says she's pregnant what happened why is her tummy flat now oh she miscarried oh she's always miscarried ah that is where everybody will put their energy everybody will be like what happened to you what happened where's the baby oh i think she lost it oh so it's also advisable not to confirm your pregnancy with others except your inner kakus i mean your husband not even extended family 
not even external family because if you are experiencing infertility and you are so quick to out of joy to announce pregnancy hey and something happens to that pregnancy i bet you they will not believe it's like that and they will say oh she's faking pregnancy to tie our brother down she's faking this pregnancy so that our brother will not take another wife she must go well, it's like that <laughs> they will carry your own problem on top of their head as if it's their problem hey may we never experience this kind of stuff especially in african settings african home hmm? or oh, people they, they are still cool with it even after five years they will still believe that you guys are not ready to have babies some may actually not want to have babies and they are living happily with their partner hey in africa hmm, once you get married today the next minute they are expecting your husband to make you pregnant already hey the next minute they are looking are you pregnant some will even be bold enough to ask you why are you not falling pregnant as if you are going to put the baby by yourself as if you are god that make these things as if you are god that makes this possible they will question you and question you and ask you one million questions hey especially some same with some mother-in-laws some mother-in-laws will be like what is going on huh I hope you guys are doing the right thing at the right time. Are you guys um, getting dusted at all? Or are you just uh, looking at this woman like this? Oh yeah, oh yeah, go inside and go and give me grandchildren. <laughs> Some mother-in-laws will not give me. Some mother-in-laws, when they were having their babies, they probably had only four or five. Mm. But come and see how they would demand for grandchildren from their daughter-in-law. Eh? I want more children. I want more boys. I want, it's easy when you are referring to another person. You don't even care whether the person has some health issues. You don't care whether the person financially can afford to have so many children. Because it's not just about having children. These days, hey, to take care of even a child is not easy. Things are really, 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 really tough. That could be the reason why Mrs. Maya is not wearing her ring. I don't think there is any thing. But you know, people will always pay attention as if they are waiting for something bad to happen to the marriage. People will always focus on this as if they are waiting for something bad to happen to the marriage. As if they, they are praying morning, afternoon, night that this marriage will not work. Hey! Overthinking will not kill us, so over Sabi will not kill us. Inquisitiveness will not kill us. You guys should leave me alone because at this point, I feel sorry for Mrs. Maya. If you are a public figure, it's not easy. <laughs> I'm also looking at this Mrs. Maya. I don't want to say too much, but if you look at the, the, the way she does her video in the past, there's no way Mrs. Trudy will film and not show all her body, like her whole full body. This, this has been her way. You understand she likes to because she knows she has this banger body slim fit body with a nice curvy shape so she will always want to show you know with her step i like when she takes her step and she goes like this with her face you know yeah there's something else that mrs maya remember the lady that what the maya shared on his ig and also on youtube here so this lady was like, oh, don't cover your hair. I think I reacted a few days ago on that. Don't cover your hair, please. Uh, because when you cover your hair, you are not being proud of Africa. You need to display it. What about this one that I'm using to cover my hair now? Mm -hmm. I can as well cover my natural hair with this taraha, with this scarf, right? So it doesn't make sense. So Mrs. Maya dropped this comment under her husband's comment and be like, tell them, tell them. I said, hey. Through the which one is this one? Which one be tell them? I was shocked when I saw Miss Through this comment. Yes, tell them. It's because she recently transitioned to having her natural looks, her natural hair. I think she's doing all this baby dress. Is that what will make her now to be like? Tell them, tell them. And you forgot that you used to do braids, you used to do wigs. So you are coming from there. You are also coming from there. You are part of the people that this lady is talking to mm. since so long as you are using some artificial stuff makeup so long as you are still covering your natural african body with clothes 
you know, you are beautifying yourself and doing all that. It doesn't make sense when you talk about people covering their hair or wearing wigs. It doesn't really make sense. I don't even want to do us so much on that. Before we call it a day, there's another clip I want us to watch here. Shout out to you. One lazy member shared this with me. Let's watch it before we call it a day. Africans are beggars. Africans are beggars. Africans are institutionalized beggars, right? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you how Ugandans be begging, right? So I married a Ugandan woman, right? Uh, my older brother married a Rwandan woman, mm -hmm. right? And at the time of both of our weddings, my old man sat down with us both and said, listen here, man, I don't want to hear a single goddamn word out of you talking about a wedding meeting. Mm -hmm. a wedding lunch. We don't fundraise. Mm -hmm. Fundraise for what? If you can't afford to pay for your own wedding, don't get married. If you cannot pay for your own wedding in full 150%, don't get married. You're not ready to get married. You're not qualified as, an, as a man mm -hmm. to say, I want to get married if you can't pay for your own wedding. Don't do it. Don't mm -hmm. waste your time. For me, we refer to uh, wedding meetings as institutionalized begging. Preach. You're sitting down <laughs> presenting a budget of 100 times more than what you can afford to have a wedding. And you, and you want 100. So this guy is saying that pre-wedding meetings where we call it in nigeria committee of friends having this gathering that uh, people will come and raise some funds towards the bride and the groom to support them you know most people will come and be like oh we need 10 crates of beer we need 10 cartons of juice or we need 10 bags of rice or we need the uh, cooking oil or we need some condiments or the ingredients some not everybody do this one actually committee of friends okay the gathering of friends prior to marriage does not necessarily mean that people want to raise funds now don't get me wrong some actually do it to raise funds some do it so that there will be orderliness on the day of marriage you know people come and then they share the duties or oh, this person will be responsible for the drinks to make sure that everybody that attended the wedding get enough drinks and the drinks are shared accordingly like to everyone that attended some will be responsible for the food okay this person will be responsible for the kitchen most of the times they hire people that cook this and you pay people that cook it so you don't even need your friends to start cooking but somebody needs to be there to make sure that everybody eats to make sure that one person did not carry everything and waka because it happens a lot so i agree with this dude to some extent if you're gonna call a meeting like this prior to your wedding just to come there and be like i need 10 million naira to do a b c d and then they start sharing it among the friends or among family members then it doesn't make sense that's a way of begging it depends on why and the motive behind the gathering if the gathering is for arrangement of the event to make sure that friends close friends of the groom and the bride are there to ensure that everything goes on well then it's okay but if the gathering is to raise fun, then that's a form of begging. So this dude is saying, if you cannot pay for your wedding, then there's no point getting married. It's not true. You don't have to beg, but actually, you look at a family member. You are well off. He's not well off, okay? Not that he, he wants to get married, but especially in Africa, it's like that, right? You're looking at him, he wants to get married and he's getting old. Be it a man or a woman, you can tell. Especially the men. This is very common with the men, okay? Your elder brother, you are already married and your first child is leaving high school. Your elder brother is still single. If you have money, why not? You will support him. This is a common practice in Africa. Your elder brother may actually not want you to do that. He might be shy. He might have this thing, this mentality. I'm the elder brother. Why must my younger brother give me money? Oh, I'm the elder brother. Why must my younger brother give me money to marry? I don't wanna. So your elder brother might be that type. Your elder brother might be egoistic. 
So in that situation, the elder brother, who is not yet married in the family, other younger ones who are well off, who are doing better, are all married. Why can't the younger ones support him without even him asking? And if he did not ask, he's not begging anymore. Come on, but begging? No. Or making it mandatory that everybody that attended this meeting, this gathering must give certain amount of money to support the marriage. I know some people do it, but not everybody. Some actually do it, like I said, to make, to make sure that things are done the right way. So more like a task force, more like people that will arrange and put things in order. That's it. No, more like um, sharing the roles, but not necessarily money. You don't have to wait until you make a whole lot of money before you get married. Ha! It's not your wish that you graduated and you don't have a job. And <laughs> if you don't have a job, you will still be aging. Okay? All your mates will be settling down and getting married. You will still be hanging around because you don't have a job and you don't have money. Of course, what do you do? You've got to do what you've got to do. If there's someone in the family that can support you, why not? Even in that situation, if you are unemployed, and it happens a lot in my coach as well, it happens a lot these days. You, a man might be unemployed and the woman is working, right? So most of the times, the lady might actually take that role of the guy just to support the guy. You understand? Though most of the times, it backfires. You see some guys, just because their pocket is empty, they are all humble and everything. As soon as, after marriage, as soon as he feels that he's in charge, I'm the man, I'm now responsible for everything, he starts cheating and maltreating the wife, and he forgot that this woman was there for him when he has nothing. A lot is going on, but I understand what this guy is saying. People actually use that as an opportunity to exploit and abuse others. And the kind of people that actually they target are the ones that are rich and flamboyant. They will be like, oh, I have a committee of friends. Oh, I'm having this meeting, pre-marriage meeting. And I would want to, like, they send the invitation to all the rich, rich guys in the neighborhood just to make them do everything for them. That's a form of begging. Begging! It's not allowed. Begging is not a good thing. It's as simple as A, B, C, D. If you watch to this moment, you know who you are. You are the best. You are the bestest. Without you guys, like seriously. How impossible. How can we do it? But because of you guys, as we are coming, we are going, we are coming, we are going. We can't even wait. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your non-comments. Thank you for your criticism. Yes, thank you for your advice. Thank you for all you do for Coco Mama. I love and appreciate you all from the bottom of my heart. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Bring someone to bring another one to bring another one. Bring someone to the table. Let's get this ministry running. I'll see you in my another one. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Bye bye. Bye guys. When I pull up with the guys, they be like four, four, four. Anything where we do, making no fall, fall, fall. Cause I know send any. Like that, she my brother. We gon' live forever. Money island to the mainland. Pulling up in